What's up guys, it's the Dual Factory once again with another video. This time it's going to be a deck profile of a Zulkin hero deck profile. This was a profile that I promised you guys in the last video, and I think it's long overdue for the channel, because for those of you who have been subscribers on my channel, knows that I'm a huge hero player and I love to play this deck. That being said, I haven't been playing it very often, because the rank 4 pool, to me, is very, very bland, generic, and it's just not very good. However, now that we have Coral Dragon and stuff like that, you've seen a lot of variants of this deck actually topping random events. So I figure I'd go ahead and give it a try, because Dark Synchro, not Dark Synchro, but Dark Hero was one of my favorite decks, and I topped a couple of regionals with it. However, with the inclusion of Coral Dragon and stuff like that, the deck's plays have gotten a lot more intricate, and it's actually a lot harder to play than I thought it was. But, we're going to go ahead and give it a go. I've been testing it for a couple days now, and this is what I came up with, so I figured I'd show you guys. So to start off, we have three copies of Elemental Hero Shadow Mist. In my previous videos, when I was playing Dark Hero, I didn't particularly like playing three Shadow Mist, but I thought it was necessary. I still think it's necessary, but I always find myself wanting to cut down to two. But, we're going with three anyway. We play three Destiny Hero Militia, so this allows for a lot of your combos to uh, go into your Zulkin, and also lets you go into other plays. Like, I was playing Beatrice in here for a little bit, just because its, play its utility was interesting, but since then I've cut it out. But you can go into, like, Zulkin, your Void Ogre Dragon naturally, go into Cypher Lord Omega, it's a target for mass change to go into Dark Law, so it's a very good card in this deck. It just it sucks when you draw multiples. Um, it also sucks to manage multiple soft pot of desires, but that's a different story. And then we play the one Diamond Dude for utility. Um, there's a lot of normal spells in this deck that you can hit off him, and he's a great one up for the deck, and he's level 4. So we play him there. On to the non hero cards. We play two Summoner Monk. Um, in Heroes, opening this card is the dream. Like, it really is. Like, this and a spell, and like, you're set to go most of the time. I can see why it's set too, because this card's broken. So we play the maximum amount. And then I've been going back and forth on this next ratio, like, God knows how much. But we are playing three copies of Armageddon Knight and one copy of Dark Greffer. So in previous builds of Dark Hero, I've always gone with two Dark Greffer and one Armageddon Knight. But now since we're including Red Resonator into the deck, I've noticed there's a lot of times where I'd rather have the Armageddon Knight versus the Dark Greffer. But there's also situations where Greffer is almost a better card. So I've changed the ratios, God knows how many times. I've done three Greffer, one Armageddon Knight. I've done two and two. And now I've decided to finally settle on three, one. And so far, that seems to be the best way to go. I still have the utility of Dark Greffer by pulling out with Rhoda and... What's the other card? Summer Monk. But being able to have the Armageddon Knight in hand seems to be the best way to go, usually with a Red Resonator. So that's the ratio we came up with. Um, we have the one Plague Spreader Zombie as a utility tuner. Plus, it's also dark that you send off Greffer, and you can also send it off Armageddon Knight. It's really good with instant fusion. It facilitates your Zulkin plays. It's just it's an all-around good tuner. And then we also play two copies of Red Resonator. He is also a two-star tuner, and it special summons a level four lower monster out of your hand. This is what makes the deck tick. Also, um... Damn it, I said it again. But... Opening this card is actually really essential in the deck because it gives you another tuner to play with. Because in original Dark Hero builds, you only had the one play spreader. But now since we have Coral Dragon, having additional tuners in your hand is actually really important because it lets you go into Coral Dragon, your start as Charge Warrior, and manage to get advantage of it. Plus it also activates Shadow Mist to get the mass change. So it's really good. And that's it for the monsters. On for the spells. You play three Hero Lives. If you open this card in any Hero variant, it's very, very hard to lose. Like, you realize, like, yeah, you pay 4k life, but it puts you so far ahead. We also play three copies of Lord of Darkness. This card's at three, so we're going to play three of it. It sometimes does get awkward because you don't want to banish your combo pieces, but it's necessary because it gives the deck the consistency it needs to be able to dig through and get to your combo pieces you need to make the huge boards. We also play three copies of Destiny Draw being able to have a discard outlet for your militias in case you draw it or being able to dump your diamond dude and get deeper into your deck is really important so we max out on that um we are playing two copies of desires i still feel like if you're going to have any chance of being competitive you have to play this card because if you go second it gives you seven cards if you go first it gives you six yes the banish 10 is a big cost and sometimes you banish really uh crucial combo pieces like for example i was testing this earlier and i banished three copies of malicious and it was absolutely terrible or you banish all your mass change and stuff like that but it's a necessary evil 
Because usually the advantage that you generate off this card is well worth the cost. By far. Like, there hasn't, there's not a lot of games that I resolve this card, and I lose. This is plain and simple. So it warrants the price. So on to the next one. We also play three copies of Resonator Call. I've been going back and forth on this ratio, too. At first I wasn't playing it. But then I realized the importance of having Red Resonator in the opening hand, so we played the Rota. And then I've gone through ratios of one Red Resonator, three of this. I've gone through three and three, and then back and forth. But that being said, I decided to finish on the ratio of three of the Surge spells and two targets. Just because with this deck, if I can get the angle on this camera right. But with this deck, you kind of want the additional spells so you have something to ditch with Monk. Because like I was saying earlier... Opening Monk in this deck is the dream. So I'd rather have an additional discard outlet for it than have a, a dead monster in hand. Because to be perfectly honest, if you open multiple Red Resonator in hand, it really sucks. But, I mean, every deck has its flaws and stuff like that. But I felt like having the additional spell for the Monk was made it worth playing the 3 Resonator call versus the 2 Red Resonator. So, we'll get with that ratio. And play the 1 Rota. It, you t it toolboxes almost every hero, not hero, but every warrior out of your deck. Other than militias, which you can tutor with Dark Greffer, so... I thought it was really good. Um, 3 Instant Fusion. I only play 1 target for it, but it's a huge combo piece in this deck, so I decided to max it out. And then... We only play 2 copies of Mass Change. Um, in the extra you see, the only target I play for this is Dark Law. I'm not playing Anki, because the idea of this board isn't to OTK your opponent, it's to make a huge, huge board. And unfortunately, Mass Change doesn't facilitate that. Like, if I didn't have to play this card at all, I just wouldn't, because I honestly hate the card. But you have to have a way to make Dark Law, and that's how you do it. Um, and you can't just play one copy of it, because you're playing Desires. So you'll have... If you banish it, you can't go into Dark Law. So you want to play at least two copies, so that way if you banish one, you have another one in the deck. Plus it's searchable, so... Um, Playing one copy of Soul Charge. If you open this card, there's no way you should lose. Like, this in Dark Greffer, there's no way. It, it, you have to be terrible to the game at that point. And then one Foolish Burial, because it's a great utility card in the deck. And then I play two Traps. Um, I play one Bottomless. I finally got my Super. I'm super excited about that. And I got it in the language I want, too. But, uh, because we do play Refelicia in the deck. And then we also play one Vanity. It's the best Trap card in the game. Like, you flip this against... Almost every deck, and you automatically win, unless they have Torn Twister. And even then, usually, the only time you... When you draw this, you usually make Spark Dragon, and then they have a real time to get around it. So that is the main deck. It is 40. And then on to the extra. We play the one Norden. This card's broken in this deck. Like, it's super broken. Two copies of the Dark Law. Macro on your opponent's side of the field owning is really good. And being able to snipe cards out of your opponent's hand is really good, too. Um, the namesake of the deck, the one Zulkin, because it summons all the good cards. So like I said, the generic rank 4 pool for the most decks really sucks. And level 8 synchros are sweet in this game, so we're playing that. One Charge Warrior, it's a great level 6. Gets you into more cards in the deck, and its other effect attack, all special summoned monsters, actually sometimes comes up. Um, the one Coral Dragon, it's a level 6 tuner, lets you go into Zulkin, draw a card when it goes to the graveyard, and the card's phenomenal. And then I do play one additional six. Uh, I play one Red Wyvern, just because I like its non-targeting effect to destroy a monster with the highest attack points on the field. Plus, I just want another generic six to go into, because there are some very intricate plays you can do where you can end with, like, Void Ogre, Omega, Crystal Wing, Dark Law. But sometimes you need an additional six to get there, so that's why I'm playing that. And then for Zulkin targets, Michael, it's good generic spot removal. Start a Spark. Uh, you can naturally make it in the deck. And it also um, protects your vanities, empties, and your dark laws and stuff like that. So it's really good. Void Ogre can also naturally be made in the deck. Um, negate spells and traps. So that's really good. One Crystal Wing. Another card you can naturally make in the deck. But you'd rather sound it off Zulkin. And then we play the one Cyframe Lord Omega. This card's good. It recycles like, all the cards you banish and stuff like that. And it's a very good generic 8. And I have one, so I'm going to play it. And then on to the rank 4s. Like I said, there, I don't think a lot of rank 4s are good, but I still play some. Uh, one Castell, I think he's the best generic. One Dweller, because locking out the graveyard is very important. And then the one Reflesia, because I do play bottomless in the deck. And that is my Zulkin Hero deck profile, guys. Like I said in the other videos, I have a whole series of GoFu decks I want to bring with you, because I think GoFu is an absolutely fantastic card. And I want to be able to show you guys some decks before something happens to it, because I honestly think that card is ban-worthy, because it gives access to Zulkin so many decks. 
and the utility it gives to a lot of decks being able to go into Omegas for decks that shouldn't go into it, and just there's a whole list of things I can tell why Gofu's great, but I'm just going to show you deck profiles instead. Also, I'm going to try to bring you guys some matches of this deck. I don't know if I'm going to do any matches with the Shadal Train deck, because I built that more for fun, but I also built this for fun, so that kind of ruins that logic. Always remember to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Later.